Seeking the Wise Wise. With Aaron and Alexander discussing the just philosophy. Covering self-development, emotional processing, conscious relationships, and five levels of overall wellness. You are here because you are seeking a different path to live your life, and we are here to share some of the wisdom of the just philosophy. Here with me is Alexander. I am Aaron. Everyone, welcome, welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about lessons and how to identify what the lesson is in a certain experience that you're having right now in your life, and maybe how we can navigate through these lessons and start learning so we don't have to repeat them because that's a major thing in life. We see people repeating lessons and it's so easy for us to identify uh, our friends and family who are repeating lessons. But I think it's for some people or most people, it's harder for us to identify our own lessons that we may be repeating in our lives. Yes. And many people, if they will look throughout their lives are caught in certain loops and certain patterns of types of people coming into their lives, certain types of altercations and You know, I've proven in my time since I've been focusing on looking at everything that I'm experiencing in my life from a more conscious view, or I just call it a willingness to learn. It led me to this part of the just philosophy of what we're going to discuss today about the choice between judging something, a person or situation, or learning from it. And I don't see it very often happen to where you're able to do both of those things simultaneously. And here we enter into the second pillar of the just philosophy, which is polarity versus duality. Yes, because part of our initial reaction when something happens in our lives that is against our preference is victimhood. We initially feel like we are being oppressed or a victim of some circumstance. A person is making us feel or have to change or redirect what we're doing in our lives. And we're here to say that that's not helpful in this whole process. Yes, and this connects into our first pillar of find the divine order in the chaos or the way that I like to phrase it for myself is everything's in divine order, whether I understand it or not. And when you stop running from these awkward situations or endings, sometimes it's relationships, sometimes it's jobs, sometimes people will complain about their job for months or years, and then they'll get laid off, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, why did this happen to me? And they don't see the energy buildup they've been doing for so long. When... That could be life just nudging them to say, hey, you've had plenty of time to make an adjustment, and now we're going to make this adjustment for you. And so it's not happening to the person. It's happening for the person. But that is a big perception shift, and that's what we're really going to get deep into. And you brought up the term judgment, and I really like how you've defined that in the past, which is, when you feel like something should be different than what it is. I keep that in the back of my mind because for me, that's the most clear way that I can determine whether I'm judging something or not. Yes, because it's one of those words that has so many different meanings, very similar to love. And it was important for me to always simplify something as much as possible. And it helps me to be able to break those patterns. So when I was able to realize that That's all a judgment was, is that I think this person, place, or thing should be different than it is. And sometimes people see judgment as just when you say, oh, they're a bad person because of what they did. They have what I call an exaggerated view of what judgment is. So they miss all these underlying judgments that happen continuously through a person's day. And it's really just part of certain people's personalities. It's not anyone's fault. It's things that our culture and our families nurtured and created into us because they didn't understand what we're working to point out on this just philosophy, that we actually have more options than we realize and that our emotions are actually an option. They don't have to be just a reaction. And again, here I want to highlight that most emotions are trained 
through the early stages of zero to seven years old, whatever the environment is, when the child's growing up, they learn to react in certain ways. And self-development, of course, in the Just Philosophy helps with breaking these family lineage patterns and seeing that it's an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to shift your vibration. And that's what we just really love talking about. I think we're up to around 130 or so episodes now over a six-year span. And you and I enjoy talking about it, and we enjoy hearing from our listeners as well. And the thing about judgment is that we are creating a resistance in our mind that doesn't actually exist. And that's why we want to stay out of judgment, because it does start that leaking of energy, because we begin to be in resistance of something in our lives. And it's usually it's something that we don't have control over. Yes. And here we can break it down as simple as if you can picture that judgment is a giving away of energy. And when you shift to wanting to learn from a person, place or situation, that's a receiving energy. So see, it's a completely different type of input output of your energy field. And again, the more a person learns to focus on things in the energetic field. It doesn't always have to be created in the physical. And that's where I like to say that the lesson can be gotten on any five of the levels, the physical, mental, emotional, energetic, or spiritual slash religious. And wherever you get that lesson, it doesn't necessarily have to continue to go through all those levels and be completed in the so-called physical. And we even mentioned and talked about a little experience you've had recently around that, right? Yes, I did, Alexander. And this was something we talked about earlier this morning because it was an experience that I had around creating our new business cards. And that kind of spurred what this conversation and topic is for this episode. And I'm going to go into sharing more of that in the complete version. I did like the way you describe the feeling or the energy flow of you giving away energy. And then when you're learning from a situation, you're gaining energy because when I've done that consciously, that is what it actually feels like. Like I get fed by learning and using a situation as my teacher versus in judgment, you just feel sludgy and I feel gross when I'm in that energy. And some people get addicted to that energy or they get stuck. They don't know how to get out of it or maybe they don't even know that there's another way. Yeah, and this is why some people attempt to use positive affirmations to shift their energy. And I'm not going to say that that doesn't work for some people, but it didn't work for me. So the way that I saw to truly shift the energy was to stop the outflow of energy and create more of the inflow of energy. And so as soon as I can see someone as my teacher, rather than a person that's attacking me and I need to defend and I need to fight back, I just see, oh, you're giving me an opportunity to love you even though you're being hateful toward me. And see, that strengthens a person to be able to hold that vibration when an opposite vibration is coming towards them. And that does literally shift the vibration because, see, this isn't just a thought. It's a whole shift on all five of those levels when you really get it and you see that, okay, maybe this person's just set in their ways and I'm bringing a new way of looking at something and they have resistance to that. See, that doesn't have to be that person's fault. There's opportunities to learn of, oh, maybe I could have introduced it differently Or yes, maybe my energy was a little too chaotic when I was talking about it. See, that is accepting responsibility. And that's pillar number four, emotional accountability and responsibility. And so, see, it's not that you're learning because you're doing something wrong. And we want to get away from that because many people that experience victimhood, they're stuck in the story that whatever they did was wrong. And we need to see that we can be corrected and not be rejected because correction is help. And many people get stuck in any kind of correction is a type of rejection. And so it activates these negative emotions from their past. 
And so this is a very, very powerful way to learn to stand in your power because, again, you're not trying to push your opinion on somebody. You're actually letting go of the fight, letting go of the resistance, and choosing to see what you can gain out of a potential failure that you may have had. But see, again here, failure is not something negative. It's an opportunity to grow is my definition of failure. So I don't have a problem saying, oh, I failed in how I introduced that topic. But this is what I just learned. I will introduce it this way next time. And so that keeps guilt, blame, either internal or external away. And I think that that leads toward a more healthy way of life. For people like me who are trying really hard to do this work and maybe too hard at times, we tend to start judging ourselves. So in this process, we learn a new way of doing things. I can even say when I first started doing this, I was able to eventually get out of victim mode or try to neutralize the situation by altering my perspective, talking through the event. And then when I would try to take responsibility, I would almost overtake responsibility and get into Mm self-judgment. And what you just talked about was the first time I ever associated self-judgment with still being a victim. Yes, because I never thought of it that way. And I would always just be like, okay, Aaron, you're just being too hard on yourself. For some people out there, it may have just been (laughs) always known that way. But for me, now that I know, it's going to be a lot easier to then get myself out of self-judgment because I'd just be like, Aaron, why are you in victim mode still? And just talk myself through that. Yeah, and another point here that I think is helpful is that anytime the thought of would have, could have, or should have shows up, oh, I should have done this, or I could have done this, then stop that train of thought and redirect it in towards, well, from this point on, if anything similar ever happens again, I'll do this different, this different, this different, and this different. And see, that is a more empowering way to utilize that energy because, again, you're learning from the situation, you're seeing what you can adjust next time, and it's not about what you should have done this time. It's about what you will do next time. And I'm so glad that this part of this subject got brought up because I think it's extremely prevalent out there in the world, especially in people that are starting or at certain levels of their self-progression journey. And guilt and shame are two of the biggest wastes of energy that there is because it's almost constant. People can hyper-focus on it and it just drains energy so fast. Would you say that victimhood and being in judgment are one and the same? I think they carry a very similar vibration. But as you said, most judgment is external except for self-judgment, and that is a type of victimhood. And even external judgment is a type of victimhood. So that's why in saying that, just realizing that you have a choice in this, and the choice is to see everyone or every situation as a teacher and the judgment just starts to go away organically. And I know so many people that work so hard to not be judgmental, but they're trying to just stop judging when they really don't even have much of an idea of just how judgmental they are, of how subtle, like, If you want any person or any situation to be different than the way that it is, then you're judging it. And so that person will torture themselves almost to death over long periods of time trying to be a better person. And again, that's a shame because it's an exhaust of energy. And with victimhood, I feel as if people go to that because they feel powerless in a situation. So... I guess the only way they feel like they can take power in that is to feel like their feelings in a situation are not their fault. And so to some people, they feel like that's where they're getting their power from. But we're turning the table over and saying, no, the way you gain power from a situation is by losing that victimhood, losing the the judgment, taking the responsibility, because your life is yours and your reactions And perspectives are really the only thing that you can have control over the situation. You can't control what your neighbor does, what your Mm -hmm. child does, what happens at your child's school or your job. So we're just in it 
and everybody else around us is energy, but they're all playing roles. So if we look at it that way, the only way we have power, the only way we can have choice in a situation is by moving out of that and then Mm -hmm. tending to focus on what the lesson is. And that's what this whole episode is about is you can't get the lesson until you, you neutralize and get grounded and get out of that emotional reaction. And one other thing I want to add here that we just haven't mentioned before we wrap up this segment is the term acceptance and see this is such a powerful term that is looked over a lot in the more of these podcasts you listen to, you just hear me say it over and over and over. Because again, acceptance doesn't equal condoning or approving of. It simply means that you stop wanting the person or situation to be different than it is or than they are. And you accept the person or situation for exactly what it is, and you stop the resistance. As soon as you stop the resistance, you stop the energetic drain. And then when you shift that into pillar four of emotional accountability and responsibility, when you shift into that level of responsibility, because a lot of people have resistance to that word responsibility, but it's very empowering. The responsibility is there's something here for me to learn, and my responsibility is to find out what that is. And therefore, I will see this person in the optimal light, no matter how they are acting toward me. And I remember when I had a huge breakthrough when I first learned the meaning of namaste. And there's many different renditions of that. But basically, to me, it means the God light in me recognizes and loves the God light in you. And I remember asking this gentleman one time, I don't see how I'm supposed to love people that treat other people poorly or treat me poorly. And he said, have you ever heard of the word namaste? And At the time, I hadn't, and he explained that you look past the actions, past the personality, and there's a common thread that we all carry as human beings, and when you can get past those two levels, you can still love that person, even if you don't approve of their uh, actions or their words, and that was mind-blowing for me, and you know, I just helped a client earlier in the week that's going through a really bad breakup. And I gave them permission to continue loving because it was like they were trying to decide that they had to quit loving this person and they're really struggling with it. And I said, it's okay to love people from afar. Sometimes we love people and that's okay, but we're not meant to cohabitate or be in an intimate relationship at that time. It's just not the right timing. It doesn't mean that it might not work out sometime down the road. And I'm not saying you should hold on for that hope. But that possibility is always there. So highlighting that term acceptance was very important. I do also like the term namaste. And I feel like the more intimately we know ourselves and when we know our energetic design and what we're capable of and we know like our downside and our high side, I feel like we automatically have more compassion and acceptance of other people because we know how... We may do things that other people may seem wrong, that we judge ourselves for doing it, but we had a reason to do it. People usually just don't do things for no reason. There's always a reason why in a perspective that we just don't understand because there's so many variables involved in that person's life that we just can't see. Sure, sure. And that's why this philosophy focuses on just choosing to see everyone as role players, as you mentioned it earlier. And that also helps to move past the personal attack Again, if you're out there in the world looking to be a student more than looking to be a judge. And one of my favorite pillars, Alexander, whenever I find myself in judgment is pillar one, which is understanding divine timing or finding divine order in the chaos. And that just helps me to have more trust in my life. And we're going to share some experiences, both you and I, in the complete version where some of that comes more into play. And we can talk about willpower and trust again as we go through these experiences, including the business car story that we teased a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to actually break it down step by step in a full process of how to go through getting the lesson out of a confrontational situation. And also how to first neutralize yourself in that situation, which is the most important part. Yes. All right, we'll see you over there. Thank you for listening to this free version of the Wise Wise Podcast. 
to hear the complete conversation and go deeper into the application of the tools and techniques of the Just Philosophy, head on over to wisewisepodcast.com and become a premium member. You'll get to hear all of our complete conversations, including the complete episodes of our Inward Journey story series and our entire back catalog, and continue your self-development journey with us. Thank you all for joining us for this free episode of the Wise Wise podcast on lessons. You know, after we got done recording this episode, Alexander said that this was possibly the best condensed episode that we had ever done on the usage of just philosophy. And most of that obviously came in the complete conversation. So you're definitely missing out on the 40 plus minutes of tools and techniques and how to work through and practice the just philosophy. And in this case, for this episode on lessons, but in every episode, it would be on that given topic. Alexander also gives us homework at the end of every complete episode so that you have an action item to get started on doing the work on that given topic. And then at the end, we also do a sound journey through the chakras and Alexander adds in a little mantra reminding you of the lesson of that particular episode. And it's all to help ground you after all of that mentally heavy and stimulating information. So in this complete conversation, we got into step-by-steps on how to go from an emotional reaction or a victim reality to figuring out what the lesson is and taking action, how the three R's is a great framework to utilize in this entire process, how to get better at anything, especially doing this work, you have to put in the consistent practice and it may even take years to see a huge change. For me, it did take probably several years in some aspects of my self-development work. Once you get started, time flies, as I'm sure everybody is experiencing as well. And I'm looking back on seven years, and I've changed immensely. I would say even every three months I look back, and I've changed a lot in certain perspectives. So just get started, and then... You know, put it on your calendar for three months in and take a look at where you were back when you got started, and you'll definitely see a change. We also got into how to tell if you are neutral versus still being in reaction, and this is definitely needed before taking that step and redirecting what you learned. How not to get down on yourself if you experience failure in your practice. We also discuss how to recognize and shift the energy when you feel that initial emotional reaction coming on. We talked about the effect an overdramatic response or a detachment response to a situation can cause when doing this work. We also talked about how we hold on to grudges or how we seem to need apologies before we start to find acceptance and how to get over that, how to just focus on finding your acceptance without needing that. A big part of this episode was obviously talking about how to derive the lesson from your whole experience. We also got into how to utilize the pillars to get realigned and help discover the lesson. We also heard Alexander walk us through an experience he had seven years ago when I first met him when he lost his two main event locations in the same week. He went into how he processed all that and how he found the lessons and how he took action. So that was an excellent, excellent example for him to share. We also got into how one can possibly go through a situation and not have to actually experience the cost of that lesson if they can figure out what the cost is and get grounded and accept that cost before the cost actually happens. And this is actually something that I experienced and I actually shared my experience around our new business cards where I recognized and accepted the cost of my actions, and then I did not have to experience the lesson or the cost on the physical level because I got it on all four of the other levels. This, I have to agree, was a tremendous episode. I mean, it is packed and condensed with information on how to utilize the negative, what we would deem negative experiences in our lives for the overall good of your growth and your self-development work. So consider doing something for yourself 
heading over to our website and going to the wisewisepodcast.com and clicking on that get complete button in the upper right hand corner. You're supporting the work. You're supporting us recording, putting our time and energy into getting this work out there so that people can start taking back their power and no longer allowing external energy and manipulation forces to control their emotional states where they can then find some contentment in their lives. And I think that's what we're all trying to find is contentment. Some people call it happiness. And we're here to help you find that. So really, really, really appreciate you all joining us for this episode. Because this one is so jam-packed, please share it with anybody you feel can benefit from this information. And with that, I'm headed out. See you on the next one. Love you all. Keep consistently putting in that effort and working on you. We honor your dedication to self-growth, overall wellness, and continuing to ask the wise wise. And remember, gradual changes over long periods of time equals lasting results. Continue on your self-growth journey by visiting the Just philosophy.com where you are able to connect personally by booking a private consultation with alexander in person by phone or zoom uncover your authentic self more easily with a human design or destiny card consultation here you will gain information about your energetic makeup personality and your higher self as well as navigating your way through your relationships There are also multiple types of reports available for purchase that help you gain insight into your career, relationships, and opportunities for self-growth. The site also allows you to view a calendar of Alexander's live performances and class schedule, peruse other products such as shirts, CDs, and finally, the revolutionary VibroTune vibrational sound therapy tables. These Contoured therapy tables allow you to bathe in a vibrational sonic bath of frequencies, bringing you into alignment on all levels. You will be feeling and hearing calming music synced through vibration and frequency. So again, you can grab all this goodness at thejustphilosophy.com, T-H-E-J-U-S-T-P-H-I-L-O-S-O-P-H-Y.com. The Just Philosophy, as discussed in this podcast, has been developed by Alexander over the last 25 years in his personal studies, private practice, and professional environment. The information discussed is intended for educational purposes only and is not meant as a replacement for conventional medicine. Just remember, knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. Seek the wise. We want to thank you for working on you. Keep shining your light and refining your vibe.